Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and this is part 3 of my MDS and VSX series and uh, here we will create some domains and we will talk a bit about naming standards and also well to do our first global policy for our two customer domains. If you haven't seen the two previous videos I would recommend you to see them before so you're aware of what MDS actually is and uh, I hope you enjoy this as you maybe remember, we did install our MDS in R8030. So let's start the normal smart console. Um, before in R77, there was a dedicated smart console for MDS, but in R80 series, it's inbuilt in the normal one. So let's log in. And as you see here, you have the domain that you need to select. And currently we have global and MDS, and we will talk about global policies and global domains, as well as the MDS is like the, the main, so to say, the, the main box. And when we add different domains here, you will see them listed here when you can log in. But let's start with the MDS. So this is how it looks when you first log into a multi-domain server. And here is the domains and this is more or less the virtualized management service that you currently have. So by default you have the global but you don't have anything else and if you're running VSX you need to create one virtual domain for putting your VSX cluster in or it's normal that you have your VSX cluster in it and then you can have different VSS or the virtual firewalls in different domains but the VSX cluster doesn't need to be in the same. It's a bit complicated um, to not see it, so we will do it, but it will not come in this this uh, um, it will not come in this video. But to be able to show you like the basic of, of MDS, we need to create one or two different domains so we can see like what's the difference, how do we use it, and so on. So let's start with that. So here under new, you can select domain, you can actually have like an HA, you can have multiple MDSs connected to each other, you can have multiple log servers to this as well. And then you can pick which domain is active on which MDS. So it's quite scalable and it can become quite large. Um, but you still have the you still have the issue with upgrades. It will take too long if you put too much eggs in one basket. So my recommendation is still below 100. Um, if not, you will need too many hours to do an upgrade. And um, well, it's complicated. So do maximum 100 domains in each MDS. The real limit is 250, but um, in real production, below 100. So here, domain. So the first thing that you need to select is a name. And already here, this is the most stupid thing with Checkpoint. You cannot change name after you have picked it. The first one that you will create if you're running VSX is normally something called main01. And here you will have like your VSX cluster. And then you will have different domains where you can put your virtualized firewall. So the cluster doesn't need to be in the same domain as the virtualized firewalls. So that's one thing. And maybe this one is not the end of the world that you cannot have a different name on or change it. But think like this. We are going to create 100 different domains. And you need unique names on all. And if you select the company name like whatever company you're thinking of, Apple, Google, Facebook, whatever. They cannot change name. I mean, Apple wouldn't change name, but let's say a smaller company and they get purchased by something. You cannot change it. And Checkpoint claims that you can change it, but I have had three professional service guys from Checkpoint on site trying to fix this. And... All three of them did, did spend two days each trying to solve this. And they didn't get it to work. Maybe it can be done. It's too much of a hassle. It's too complicated to actually do it. 
maybe you can do it if you do a complete reinstallation with a new box with a new cluster etc 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 but how often do you do that how often do you actually do a reinstallation on a completely new box well if you do a hardware like if you do an appliance box yes maybe but i run my my uh, MDSs in VMware and I try to do an upgrade instead of just reinstalling reinstalling um, it's really complicated and don't get me started on this with no changing name it's so stupid it's not an issue if you have 10 domains it's an issue if you have 100 domains because you cannot search on something that is human readable and you don't want to put something that is human readable so you need to use your, your database and you need to find the customer. Then you need to find which type of customer number it has and just go down. And I mean, that's the way you should work. But I still think it's stupid that you cannot search for a comment. It's stupid that you cannot change name. And I really think that th this is something that Checkpoint needs to fix. And if R&D is watching this, when you do a new release, make sure it's possible to change the names on all the fields because it's really, really annoying for a real customer not to be able to change name. And it's more or less horrible for a service provider. So for example, I have taken over, let's say five MDSs from, a, from a, what is it called? A company that is owned by our company. And the customers in this one they're using the names that the customers did have 15 years ago. How many of those do you think is the same as it is now? Not many. Very few. So it's not the, like the last name either. It's like what they were called, let's say, 7 or 10 years ago. So it's a bit tricky because then you need to have a list. Like if this company is called whatever it actually means this company annoying really really annoying frankly it's stupid but that's how it is learn to live with it my recommendation is to use numbers ids or something that doesn't change or just call them domain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then have a list and map it together. But don't use customer IDs, don't use customer names. Don't use customer shortings of names. Don't call it the location. Use numbers. It's horrible, it's not human readable, but you all should start coding. So Maybe that checkpoint is forcing you to do this, but this limitation has been forever since this product was released many, many years ago. So, um, well, <laughs> I think that was like five minutes ranting on why you cannot change name and why it's so horrible. But just remember, you cannot change name. And if you want to change name after, good luck. So... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that, but I just needed to tell I just needed to say this because this is something that is bugging me so much and I take it up with each R and D person I talk to, each PS I talk to, and they all say like, yeah, it's possible to change. No. And the people that have tried has failed. If you can show me how to do it in real world in less than two days show me please <laughs> send me a link send me a video on how you actually do it i, I bet someone in community will just do it just to annoy me <laughs> because i uh, i uh... no okay <laughs> let's change the topic <laughs> yeah okay so um main zero one and we call it uh, cma and then i normally take the next available ip address i mean you you should allow like a span of 
let's say uh, slash 25 is slash 24. Um, I normally take a slash 25 because then I have 128 IP addresses uh, minus some stuff like gateways and so on. So I normally end up with like 64 possible domains with log server and uh, that's about the size I want to have these boxes on. So uh, that's why I normally take a slash 25. And I actually use public IP addresses, but we are a service provider, um, easier. Um, as you see here, IPv4. So maybe in R81 you can do IPv6, but the IPv4 here, learn to deal with it. 192.168.1.111. Okay. And then we need to select trusted clients and we don't have anyone here and we cannot create a new one here. So if you want to have a separate one, you actually need to create it before, but we forgot that you can add it later on. It's quite easy, but so far we need to add any clients. Uh, additional info, I, I, can, I can put this in just yes, so you can see that uh, it's not actually searchable. So um, I, I, I will put just VSX here and I will take VSX here in the name as well. I will not put an email in contact. And when you press OK here, this is something that will take effect immediately. So you don't need to push. You don't need to install policy. This is something that will just go. And you can see the process of it's creating it here and it will be listed here when it's done. Okay, so uh, the main domain is, is uh, fixed. So let's just create two more. Customer one, customer two. And let's call this Volvo. Volvo is a Swedish company. Or it's actually bought by Geely, but well, we still see it as Swedish. So Volvo and 192.168.1. 112 add any as trusted clients nice to have a uh, new button here but well it doesn't exist and we just put in volvo here as well and create and i will create the second one as well and it will be called um, i don't know scania also a swedish company so more or less this search window allows you to search for everything that is visible in this list. But you cannot search on anything that you put in a comment. So this is not searchable and this is not searchable. You will see it if you press here. So you see the information here. And just as a reference, we can put in additional info. Um, customer1 at volvo.com.se. So you can see here, but if I search for Volvo, you don't get it up. Um, so if Checkpoint should fix anything in MDS, it should be this. At least make it searchable within this window. So you can search on comments. It will make service providers and large customers life so, so much easier. This is the most annoying thing with Checkpoint. Um, and if you can learn to deal with it, Checkpoint is a great product, but this one is just stupid. <laughs> I don't know why. Ah. Take 30 seconds to just type that in. Um, sorry, but I actually need to cut here. Uh, both that video actually is like 15 minutes already, but the rest of the 30 minutes of the footage actually got destroyed. So, um, well, there will be a part two of this one. And in that part, we will talk about trusted clients. We will talk about, uh, different administrators and how to assign them to different domains. 
and we will also touch on uh, global policies. So we will attach a global policy to our two customer domains so you can see how that works as well. So uh, thank you for watching and um, I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.